Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Today I'm working on this Saturn 2001 L series and it's vibrating or shaking while it's idling. I think it's misfiring. I didn't have my scanner at first, but I've gone ahead and retrieved it. I pulled the plugs. The plugs were filed, and one of them, the gap was twice what it should have been and been open. It may be a bad spark plug. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the scanner on it, scan it, see what's misfiring, and maybe swap the plugs around, see if the misfire follows, and just try to figure out why it's misfiring. We're showing a P0302, which is a misfire on two. Here's the tools you need to do a compression test on this uh, 2001 Saturn L series. Got a compression gauge, a magnet to pull the spark plugs out, your 5 8 to get the spark plugs out, the 10 millimeter to get the uh, coil pack assembly off of the spark plugs, and then I had a needle nose pliers to help me get the fuse uh, out of the fuse box so if you got any questions go ahead and post them anytime you do a compression test you want to uh, disable the ignition and disable the fuel pumps or fuel injectors you don't want fuel spraying in there so you pull this main relay cover off you push the tabs on it pull it off and inside the cover it has a fuse here for ignition and another one for fuel injectors so I'm going to look at a couple more of the relays and get that fuse puller out here and pull these off. I can't even get the fuse puller out of here, so I'm going to need a pair of pliers to get that off. Someone actually had the fuse puller in upside down, so it was hard to get out. But I'm going to pull a fuse for uh, the fuel control and the ignition. Okay, inside the cap and set, this was an ignition uh, fuse, and this was a fuel pump. Uh, relay so I pulled that relay pulled that fuse and went inside cranked it over for about I, I, I tried to crank it over what I sounded like about eight revolutions you hold the throttle pedal all the way down so you're at watt and let's see what our reading is on our compression gauge all right once you got the cool pack loosened all four bolts with the 10 millimeter socket you can unplug the plug on the back of it so that it lifts out easily all right so you just grab it and lift it right out of the way now you have good access to your spark plugs once you get the uh, coil pack assembly lifted off this is how the motor looks you can see the four cylinder ports you can just drop the tool down in there to uh, pull the spark plugs out one at a time so I'm since I didn't have my scan tool with me I'm gonna pull them out one at a time see if I can figure out which one's missing all right, well, here's the socket. Almost like most cars, the, the uh, spark plugs are deep in the motor, so you need an extension or two to get them out, and you got your standard uh, spark plug socket to pull them. Here's the one of the spark plugs after actually cleaning it up. As you can see, the gap is probably twice what it should be, so this is probably what was causing this uh, Saturn a misfire. So I go, went on ahead and cleaned it off, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them back in, see if it's still missing. Okay, I wasn't sure which one was one, two, and three, so I pulled the first three because I knew I would get at least two and three. Well, this plug still looks a mess. These two look like they're firing. So I set them here in order, and as you can see, the first plug looks like it's been firing. The second one is covered with fuel or oil. Doesn't look like it was firing. And the third one looks like uh, it was firing. So I'm going to do a compression test on these first three cylinders to see what kind of numbers I get. Okay, compression on this number one cylinder looks like about 162. So I'm going to move it to the number two cylinder and see what that compression is. Well, there's number two. It has, gosh, 20 PSI, so we either got a burnt valve or a bad piston somehow. 
this third cylinder came up to about 145, 148. So this number is too uh, dead. I don't know if it's a piston problem or a uh, problem. Okay, I took a cap full of motor oil. I pulled, poured it down that number two. I'll let it set for a, a few seconds. And then I'll shoot the compression test on that one again. Uh, just to try to get an idea. If it seals up better than that, it's probably a piston problem. If it's still down around 20% or 20 PSI, it's likely a uh, burnt valve. Now, it's rough riding on a car with a bad cylinder, a uh, burnt valve or whatever. I don't know how long a car can run on it, but it is going to idle hard. Uh, the only way to really do it is to disconnect the fuel injector from that cylinder. That way that cylinder is not getting gas pumped in it and that gas is getting pushed down into the exhaust system and catalytic converter. So I'm going to go ahead, disconnect that uh, fuel injector for that cylinder. And if she needs to drive it for a little while like that, she can. If not, she'll just uh, decide whether or not she's going to scrap the car or try to have the motor rebuilt. It got a little bit better, not a lot, so it may be a piston sleeve slip or burnt valve. The only way to really tell is to do what they call a leak down test. That's when you put compressed air on top of the piston. You bring the piston up as high as you can. You put compressed air on it, and then you see if it holds pressure or you can hear uh, air escaping the motor. So I think I'm going to go ahead and button this. So I got them all uh, tightened back down, gap properly at 0 0.045 inches or 1.14 millimeters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the coil assembly back on there and tighten it back down. Work the cover on and down as best you can to help the spark plug uh, boots fit inside the holes. And then tighten the bolts down with your 10 millimeters. Okay, I got the coal pack assembly uh, set back in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down with the 10 millimeter socket. All right, once you got these tightened down, I wouldn't tighten them too tight. You don't want to crack anything. Go ahead and plug the uh, socket in the back of the coal pack. Okay, you put your fuses back in your uh, fuse box and your relays and then put the lid on the uh, box here. So, the fuse holder goes in here with the ridges up where you can grab it and pull it out and put it back in there. I don't know how somebody got that in upside down. And then, of course, this red thing goes over the jumper, which is here. So, make sure you put this box on right. When I came in here, it was upside down. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.